Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Um, the title of my teaching is Light Bearers. Light Bearers. Right, Luke, your name, right? That's what it means. Now, uh, I'm just going to let you know I'm going to be hitting you with a lot of scriptures today. Okay? I'm going to be hitting you with, with the word. I think uh, really what I say doesn't really matter as much. I think what God's word uh, says is more. So I think that's a... Uh, I think that's what I felt like I'm going to be hitting with a lot of scripture today. So a little warning, okay? So um, um, I'm going to start off with Philippians chapter 2. Again, Philippians chapter 2, uh, 12 through 16. It says, Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. With fear and trembling. For it is God who works in you both to will and to do for his good pleasure. And this is a tall order for us here. It says, do all things without complaining and disputing, <laughs> that you may become blameless and harmless children of God without fault in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation. Do we live in a crooked and perverse generation? I think we do, right? Among, and here's a key, among whom you shine as lights, you shine as lights in the world, holding fast the word of life, so that I may rejoice in the day of Christ, that I have not run in vain or labored in vain. And again, I was just reminding, this is how I kind of, I get these teachings, I'm like, God, what am I going to teach about? And I tend to be topical, um, you know. And, and, and I think Pastor Wayne is, he, he's, he's reading along and he gets it and he breaks down the words. It's funny how we're a little different. Um, you go by, you're reading this, that scripture and, and, and then you just expound on that verse. And I feel like I get more topics. So we'll see, we'll see what happens as uh, the years pass. <laughs> I might run out of topics maybe, I don't know. So um, again, I was in the middle of my own business and uh, I was reading Philippians and the title it was, it was entitled Light Bearers. And that grabbed my attention. I was like, a light bearer. And, I, and, and normally, you know, again, when you're reading the scripture, don't just, if you read something, just don't keep on reading. It, it, it doesn't stand out for you. That's probably something you should research for yourself. If you come across something you don't understand, that's probably what you need to dig into. Amen? So that's something. So I just looked at light bearers. I was like, I know kind of what it meant. But I was like, it hit me uh, for a reason. I felt like that's what the Lord wanted me to sh uh, share with you. I did a quick search and then found at least 76, 76 verses in the Bible that have to do with light. So light is an important factor in, in our, our lives as Christians. But I want to talk about first what the Bible testifies about Jesus. Uh, we are his light bearers, but I want to talk about Jesus first because he's... The reason why we are light bearers. So John chapter 14, verse 6. Again, John chapter 14, verse 6, it says, Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. I'm going to say that again. Jesus said, I am the way. The truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Now, as Christians, we often get accused of being exclusionary, right? Like we're some cool club that doesn't let everybody in. Okay, we're a club that doesn't let everybody in, an exclusive club. Or they may think, people may think we think we're better than them. And that's far be if they know me or if they know you like I know you guys, that's not the case. The fact is, none of us are good enough. That's why Jesus had to die for us, right? We're here because none of us are good enough. And if we ever, and the world I think sometimes gets tricked in the fact that you have to be good enough, then you then you can start going to church, and then you can start being a Christian and then following the Lord. The fact is, you're never going to be good enough. I'm never going to be good enough. We need Jesus. Now, 
And, and unfortunately, the world makes it that way, makes it in, in a fact that we seem exclusive, but we're really not. And what, let me show you, because, let me explain this. You see, all the invitations to the party have been set out. Jesus didn't withhold any invitation to anyone. It's not an exclusive club. Amen? All are welcome to accept God's grace and live their lives for Christ. Everyone is welcome. But like it says, and, I, and, and, and this is uh, Matthew 22, 1 through 6, and it's the parable of the wedding feast. Matthew 22, uh, 1 through 6. It says, And Jesus answered and spoke to them again by parables and said, The kingdom of heaven is like a certain king who arranged a marriage for his son and sat out his servants to call those who were invited to the wedding, and they were not willing to come. They weren't willing to come. Invitations were sent, but they weren't willing to come. Again, he sent out other servants saying, tell those who were invited, see, I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and fatted cattle are killed and all things are ready. Come to the wedding. But they made light of it and went their way. One to his own farm, another to his business, and the rest seized the servants. Not only did they ignore the servants, they seized the servants, treated them spitefully, and killed them. See, the invitation has been sent out to the world. We are not an exclusive club. We are not an exclusive. Jesus desires everyone to come to him. Amen? Now, Jesus is in fact the way, the truth, and the life. There's no way around it. He's the only way to get to the Father. It's the only way. There's no other name in which a person can be saved. Yes, there's only way. One way. But this way is available to everyone. And I think I've established this. Now, when I read this, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, I often say, on accident, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Yeah. Who does that? Anyone else? Okay. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Hallelujah. Well, I have good news for you. You're not wrong. <laughs> He quoted it wrong, but Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Okay, and let me expound a little bit. I thought this was interesting, uh, but I am happy to, to justify my mistake here and, your, and, and help you with your, your error. Okay, because it says here in John chapter 8, verse 12, it says, Then Jesus spoke to them again, saying, I am the light of the world. I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. The light of life. So when we misquote, God has some grace there because it, it is true. He's like, yeah, that's it. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I got you. The light and the life. Now, what is the relationship? I said, okay, well, he says he's the light of life. I was like, okay, what does that mean? And I just did a little search. What is the relationship? I just typed this in. What is the relationship between light and life? Just Google search. Light is a primary tool for perceiving the world and interacting it with it with men, for many organisms. Light from the sun warms the earth, drives global weather patterns, and initiates the life-sustaining processes of photosynthesis. And I thought this was a little nerdy, but I'll share this with you. About 10 to the 22nd power, joules of solar radiant energy reach Earth each day. So 10 to the 22nd power means 10 times 10 times 10 times 10. You know, do that 22 times to get that answer. Okay? So without light, there would be no life. So when he says he's the light of life, without him, there is no life. He's the light, there's no power. He's the light. He's everything there. So when Jesus proclaimed in John 8, 12, that he was the light of the world, he proclaimed he was God, the source of all light and life. Without light, there is no life. If the sun was gone, S-O-N, or S-U-N, right? There would be, life on earth wouldn't last very long, okay? He also proclaimed how we can have light. By following him and living like him in the world rather than living in the darkness and sin. And let me read this, uh, another verse. Like I said, I'm going to read a lot of scripture. John chapter 1, 1 through 5. The eternal word. word. The eternal word. In the beginning was the word, 
and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him nothing was made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. We are light, and sometimes the darkness does not comprehend it. Jesus is the light of light, but we are bearers. And this is where it goes into my teaching, the bearers of his light. 1 Peter chapter 2, 9. 1 Peter 2, 9. But you are a chosen generation. And these are all familiar scriptures, and I love these scriptures. Hopefully I'm encouraging you in the word here. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. Not only are you royalty, but you're also a priest. Okay, you're part of a royal priesthood. Not just royal, but you're also his priest. A holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness. He called us, amen? He called us out of darkness. A lot to do with darkness and light here. He called us out of darkness. He calls us out of darkness into his marvelous light. 2 Corinthians 4, 1 through 6, the light of Christ's gospel. Therefore, since we have this ministry, okay, so keep that in mind. This is our ministry. Uh, Christina said, what, are we, what am I supposed to do with my life? We were, what, is, what, what am I supposed to do? Well, here it is. Therefore, since we have this ministry, here's your ministry. What am I supposed to do for God? Here it is. As we have received mercy, we do not lose heart. But we have renounced the hidden things of shame, not walking in craftiness nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifest, manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing, whose minds the God of this age has blinded. So the devil wants to blind the minds of those that you're sharing the gospel with. Okay? who do not believe, lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. If we do not preach ourselves, that's important here. We don't preach ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord. And ourselves, your bondservants, for Jesus' sake. For it is the God who commanded light to shine out of darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give the light of knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. So I want to be careful here. When when the light when we're light bearers, okay, we are not, I'm not a tin bearer. I'm not talking about my light. I'm not talking about Steve's light. I'm not talking about Brad's light. Okay? I'm talking about we are Christ's light. Okay? I bear the light of Jesus. I love that the passage of Scripture also states that the bearing of His light is our ministry. So that's your ministry. If you're wondering what your ministry is, you're supposed to be bearing a light bearer. A light bearer. Whose light? Not my light, but God, Christ's light. That's your ministry. Simple. There it is. I solved your problem. There it is. What am I supposed to do about that, though? Okay. So, figure it out. You have to... Speak, you know, talk to God about it. So Matthew chapter 5, 14 to 16. Matthew chapter 5, 14 to 16. I love this one. You are the light of the world. That's what he calls you guys. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket. That would be silly, wouldn't it? Think about that for a second. You light a lamp and then you cover it. Why would you light the lamp? Right? You, but you put on a lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father. Now, what's the purpose of us bearing the light? It says right here. So the, the world could glorify our Father. The Lord, that the world would glorify your Father. This is a mouthful. We are the light of the world. Now, Jesus is commanding us to be a very visible light, though, here. And I wrote, not a nightlight. They're useful, 
okay, for a purpose, but he's saying not be a light. He wants to be a visible. He wants us to be a light, a city on a hill. Let's see. And I found this. I thought this was interesting. Are you a city on a hill? It is not meant to be hidden, the light. A city on a hill is meant to be seen and found even in the darkest night. That's the purpose of a city on a hill. So it can be found. During the time of Christ, the walls around a city on a hill were often made from white limestone, which would be relatively easy to see even in dim light. So they made the walls uh, like a white, like a light limestone. And why? Because if, think about it, if you're traveling, where is this city you want to get to that refuge? You want to get to that place. That's what we're supposed to be. We're supposed to be super visible, easily found, okay? Now my question is, are we covering up our light like a basket or a lamp? That's something that you have to ask yourself. That's something I have to ask myself. And the answer is yes, for me at times. And again, why we want to shine? What's the purpose of this? Again, to glorify the Father in heaven. Now, here's the important part about this. Being a light bearer is an active choice, though. You have to choose to do it. You have to choose it. Now, what does it mean? To bear something means to carry the weight of. If you're a light bearer, you're carrying the weight of. Okay? And it also reminds me of the scripture, like, take up your cross and follow me. Like, to bear your cross. So you're taking up your cross. And, and, and this makes me think that we are literally vessels to carry his light. We are light vessels. And again, what is this light we're carrying? It's the gospel of Jesus Christ. It is the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I love this scripture. It always encourages me. Romans chapter 1, 16. Romans chapter 1, verse 16. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes. For the Jew first and also for the Greek. I am not ashamed of the gospel. I am not ashamed of the gospel. The gospel has power. The gospel has power. We, have, we can't be ashamed of that gospel. Now, <clears throat> I want to ask ourselves, how, well, how do we prepare ourselves? And I thought this was pretty interesting. Um, I've been reading this scripture a little while now. But how do we pre prepare ourselves to be a light? How do we bear this light? What do we do? Because I said it's an active decision to do. And in Romans chapter 13, 11 through 14, Romans chapter 13, 11 through 14, it says to put on Christ. That's the title of that passage. Put on Christ. And the scripture goes like this. And do this knowing the time that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. For now our salvation is nearer than we first believed. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Therefore let us cast off the works of darkness. And let us put on the armor of light. The armor of light. Let us walk properly as in the day, not in revelry and drunkenness, not in lewdness and lust, not in strife and envy, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill its lusts. The scripture is awesome. It literally tells us to wake up. Wake up! <laughs> I saw some of you guys sleeping. <laughs> wake up! It is later than you think. 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 You realize. You don't realize how late it is. If Jesus is telling us to wake up. The night is far spent. Jesus is coming back again. Jesus is coming back for his people. It's later than you think. You may think. I was just telling my wife on the way here. I said, our lives are literally held by a string. We don't realize we could be gone in a second. We want to not think about that. That's true. And if we thought about that all the time, we'd be a nervous wreck. But the reality is, reality is we don't have any control of what happens to us. It's later than you think. It causes us to wake up. 
He also calls us to put off the works of darkness. That's something we need to do. We need to put off the works of darkness to be his light bearer. To be effective uh, light bearers, we have to put off those works. He's called, if you remember in all the scriptures, he's called us out of darkness. We're not to walk in darkness. The phrase put on Christ means to clothe oneself with the Lord Jesus Christ to reveal the glory of God in the world. Putting on Christ here speaks of having clothed with oneself with a new nature. Believers are taught to put on the new self created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. Now this is where I thought, I, I was like, man, is this right, God? This, this, is, this kind of blew my mind a little bit. And maybe it doesn't blow yours, but I, you know, I thought this was interesting. Because it says to put on Christ, but then it says put on the whole, uh, and then it says, um, Put on the armor of light. Don't, but don't you, we also say put on the armor of God? Hmm, that's a lot of putting on. There must be a reason for it. So we have already established that God is light. He's the light of the world, right? So the armor of light is the same as the armor of God. Like the armor of God, the armor of light, and, and, and Christ are the same thing. We're putting on Christ. Armor of light. Think about it. It says, therefore, the Lord Jesus Christ and the armor of God and the armor of light are equivalent. They're all tied together. Okay? In Romans in, in Romans 13, like I just read. Look, look, let's look at the armor, the whole armor of God for a second. Um, Ephesians chapter 6, 13 through 18. It says, therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and haven't done all the stand. Stand therefore, having girded your waist with truth. Well, if you're girding your waist with truth, who is the, I am the way, the, it's Jesus. You're putting on Jesus. So when you put on truth, you're putting Jesus on. Do you see? Put on Christ. Put, um, we are, you know, put on the armor of light. Okay? And it says, having put on the breastplate of righteousness. Well, who's our righteousness? Sounds like a Sunday school answer. Jesus? Very good, Johnny. And having you shot your feet with a preparation of the gospel of peace. Well, who's the, what's the gospel? Again, above and all, taking up the shield of faith. Well, who do we have faith in? With which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. And taking on the helmet of salvation. Well, who's our salvation? Do you see? It's a rhetorical question, but I'm like, oh, wait, wait, wait. You're literally putting on all the attributes of Jesus. That's what you're doing here. So when you're putting on the armor of God, you're putting on the attributes of Jesus. I don't know, it was like, for me, I was like, what? Like, you know, like a little bit, like I used to just pray this. I pray this in my car. I say, we put on the helmet of, the breastplate of, we gird our loins with a belt buckle of, we shot our feet with the gospel boots of, we take up the shield of, the sword of your word, the cloak of, and the garment of praise. <laughs> right. So anyway, that's that's our car when we drive together. That's our thing. We do that. So again, and take on the helmet of salvation and the sword of the the sword of the spirit. Well, who is this, the word? Again, <laughs> Jesus. So you're putting on. This is what it means. So I was like, oh wait a minute. I thought it was like some like coat or something, you know, like you're putting this on, but literally you're putting on all the attributes of Jesus, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. We put on Christ when our old ways are nailed to the cross and we wear the grace and forgiveness of Jesus as a glorious garment for all the world to see. We're putting on Jesus. The spiritual garments no Christian should ever, ever be without is the Lord Jesus Christ. Putting on Christ means let, letting the Lord be our armor. Embracing him over and over and daily trusting in him in faith, thankfulness, and obedience. We are clothed in Christ when, we're, when we become so closely united with Jesus that others see him and not us. I like that part where it says we become so closely united. That's the key though too. We have to have a strong relationship with Jesus. Now, this world can be a very dark place. Jesus called us out of darkness. 
hopefully we know we're fighting a spiritual battle here. And that's why they're asking us. Every day has to be a conscious decision. When you wake up, I put on Christ. I put on that armor of uh, light. I put on the armor of God. You're putting him on. It's a conscious decision that you're doing. You're doing these things. It's not a ritual. It's not a ritual. You know, it's not like something like a spell or something. You know, you're putting the you're putting Christ on. <clears throat> now, to close with this scripture, I thought this was also something to keep in mind. Um, and the Lord says this about us too. This is Luke chapter four, eighteen and nineteen. Now, it doesn't necessarily. This scripture doesn't necessarily. Talk about light directly. It's kind of indirectly. But this is what the, Jesus proclaimed about himself. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because he has anointed me. To preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, To proclaim liberty to the captives. And recover a recovery of sight to the blind. To set at liberty those who were oppressed. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Now Jesus said that about himself, but we can say this through him. It's, this is not my power, Tim's power, but this because of Christ. Because we put on Christ, we can um, say that the preach gospel to the poor. We can heal the brokenhearted in Jesus' name. We can proclaim liberty to the captives. Because of that, we can give sight. And sight is great darkness with light, right? To set at liberty those who are oppressed. And to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Amen? Lord God, I just pray, Father, that um, this would make sense to everyone. <laughs> first of all. But God, I just pray, Lord, that we would be conscious to put on that armor every day. Not as a ritual, but literally, we're putting on Christ. We're putting on your attributes. We're, we know that we can't walk. We just wake up and we, we're not going to do anything in our own strength. Lord God, we just call upon your strength right here in the name of Jesus Christ. We put on the armor of light. We put on Christ Jesus. Lord God, we put on the whole armor, Lord God, that we can do the things that you're calling us to do. Lord God, in your ways, in your power, Lord God. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen.